Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple Gift Cards to your friends and family this holiday season. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the TMOS Boss Show. And in today's episode, this will be universal advice for whatever situation you are in where there are people in this world trying to control you. Like, you, you're going to meet people at some point in time in your life, whether it's a significant other, family member, friend, enemy, whoever it is, they're going to really try their hardest to control you. Control how you think, control how you eat, control what you do, the people that you hang out with. Like, you know, there's there's going to be at times where it's like you might meet a significant other and they don't even want you talking to your own family. Like, honestly, I, I think people, you know, if you know me, you know how much like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like I might have my moments where it's like me and my family, we might bump heads and stuff. But there is nobody in this world that will bring me away from my family. I'm sorry, but that's not going to happen. Like if somebody, if a significant other, she was all like, I don't want you talking to your mom anymore. I'm like, how is that going to work? Like, honestly, even if it's a family member where it's like we might not have like that same bond as my mom, but it's a family member I am cool with. And they're all like, I don't want you like, let's say, for an example, it's my my uncle that got me in the video games. She's all like, oh, I don't want you talking to that uncle anymore. What did he do to you? Unless there's like some issues or something where that man did something to you, then I would kind of I would question him about it. I'd be like, OK, what did you do to this girl? Because she doesn't even want us in the same building. But I'm like, so that's what I would say. I'm like, what did you do to her? Because if there is if there is something that he did, then I'm like, okay, questionable. But I, I got to investigate. You know, I got to start my little investigation about the situation. But other than that, it's like, yeah, if there's, if there's no reason, she, you know, she just be like, oh, I just don't want you talking with them. I, I just don't, I don't like his vibes. Oh, he's this, his Zodiac sign. Like, I, I'm getting bad vibes from him because of his Zodiac. I would leave the girl. I honestly, I would dump that girl right then and there. I'm like, I can already tell that this relationship ain't going to last. Not based off of the fact that you don't even want me hanging out with my own family, but the fact that you don't want me to hang out with my family because of his Zodiac sign. That, no, that, that's not going to happen. I'm like, I will purposely go and invite this man. Like, if there is, like, if there is at a point in time where I was mad rich, I will, I would invite this man on a vacation, all right, to freaking, you know, no, 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 no. This is, this is how petty I will really get, right? This is how petty I would get. I will go above and beyond, right? Above and beyond. Because he, you know, this uh, uncle, he has kids. I will invite him. His kids, the mother of his um of their kids or of his kids, all to a trip, and I will make sure of it that I am there. I will take pictures, I will record YouTube videos, I will do Twitch streams, I will do TikToks, I will do everything possible to let that woman know I'm not going to you're not gonna control my life like that. If there's no reason now, <clears throat> excuse me, I can understand if you're wanting to control a person's life. Uh, for the better, but not your version of, you know, what's better and what's not better, like the universal version of what's better and what's not better and stuff, like overall, you're doing like, so let's say if I was like a drug addict or something, right, which I'll never be, but I'm just saying, like, let's say if that was the case, I'm a drug addict, she wants me to stop doing drugs, if that's the level of controlling she wants to have, there, that is not a problem, that is not an issue because there are people in this world that think like, you know, like if that's your sit um situation where you got like a you smoke a lot of weed or you might do some other hard drugs or whatever. And that person's like worried and concerned for you and they are talking to you constantly telling you, hey, you need to slow down. You need to chill out. Whether it's that or a drinking issue, an eating issue, if that person is doing it to help you out in life, to benefit your health, that's, I feel like, and let's say if it's a situation where, like, 
because I know I might eat um, and drink like a, a lot of unhealthy things. And I know there's going to probably be at a point in time where I do have that conversation with whoever my girlfriend or wife is. And she's going to be all like, hey, you got to stop drinking soda. You got to start eating more vegan food. You got to start eating more vegetarian food. I'm like, if it's going to benefit my health, then I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to hate every moment of it, but she cares about me. She wants me to be in a healthy state. I can't be mad at her about that, all right? that That's just showing that a person actually loves and cares for you. Now, if they're trying to, yeah, overall, like I was saying, if they're trying to control you, like, out of love for you because they want to help you out, they want to, like, benefit, like, they, they want the help that they're giving you to benefit you, not them. Because if that's the case, I'm like, fine, sure, that will 100% work. But I have met people that overall wants to, quote, unquote, help, or control me, but it's overall going to benefit them. They're only going to use it for their benefit. Because, all right, so let's say, you know, for a prime example, prime, prime example. So back uh, in 2016, when uh, uh, just a robot was trying to offer me some, you know, quote unquote help and stuff. For what? Why? And my thing is this, like, okay, so let's say if I did accept his help and my channel skyrocketed, I hit like 10 million subscribers because of what he told me. So like, let's, the thing is, is like, I don't want my career to be credited to him. That's not going to ever happen. All right. But then let's say like, if it's either that or it's going to be a situation where I don't give him no credit or people ask me. It's going to be like kind of like uh, how it was with that um, KSI and Gujan Daniel, where Gujan Daniel was all like, oh, I don't know who KSI is, even though KSI is the reason why his channel blew up in the first place. So that's why, it, like, it, you know, stuff like that is not going to work. If you're doing it to benefit yourself, and don't be, my thing is this, don't be blind or oblivious or dumb or stupid acting like you don't know what you're doing when you know that whatever you're trying to do is only going to benefit you. It ain't going to benefit that person, all right? Yeah, it might benefit that person. It, it, I feel like this. It's like... It's like a like a renting type benefit. Like for an example, uh, um, Death Row Records. All right, like we're gonna if we're gonna be talking on like you know control and all that stuff. Y'all should definitely watch movies, videos, all that stuff about Death Row Records. It would not surprise me if they were to do a movie about the upbringings of Death Row Records because oh my God, the stories, the drama, all the stuff in the controlling that. Death Row Records have for people, you know what? Not to even talk on all the previous exams, because I, I feel like all the previous things I've talked on has, you know, always been talked about in my podcast episodes. But no, we're going to talk about uh, Death Row Records, or so far what I know from what I've seen from Death Row Records. But anyways, at one point in time, it looked like, you know, based on kind of how like they portrayed it in movies and stories and all that stuff, like story times and tellings and all that, you know, Death Row Records looked like it was going to start off as a promising company. You know, all the money, all that stuff, it was all going to uh, the CEO of uh, Death Row Records, um, Suge Knight. So Suge Knight... You know, he's making, um, he's signing, uh, like, all these different talented artists, signed Dr. Dre, signed Snoop, uh, um, what are some other artists, he signed, I think it was, uh, a family member, a cousin of, um, Dr. Dre, but yeah, he's signing all of these talented artists, selling out all these different albums, making all this money, but all of that money is going into Suge Knight, right? So, in a way, you know, when they sign, and that's why, like, probably I think a lot of uh, artists nowadays, they go um, independent because they don't want nobody trying to have control over their money and what they're doing and, you know, and all that. They want to have control over themselves. So, anyways, Suge Knight's making all this money, right? And... Of course, you know, like the artist is, they're going to go to him, you know, to uh, like for whatever reason where it's like, oh, they might want a new car. Or they might want a house for their parent or something or, you know, for themselves. So anyways, yeah, Suge Knight, he's buying all these things, but he's buying it in their name. So these, you know, these guys like skyrocketing or, you know, launching their career through death row records rather than launching it themselves. And I feel like it's more, it benefits you more versus another because like you think about it, it's like these guys, yeah, they're going to have to go to shows 
and and uh, be on radio stations, be in their songs, talking about, yeah, shout out to Death Row Records, we're the record label, we're this, we're that, you know, and they gotta give all this credit, they gotta give all this support to Death Row Records, but then it comes time to it, when they gotta be in battle, and then at one point in time, Death Row Records, they were at battle with, like, all these different, you know, people and things, and so then it's like, they gotta still stick with Death Row Records, as much as they're not like, oh, I don't like the, um, you know, being a part of Death Row Records, you ain't got no choice. Suge Knight has control over you. You ain't got no choice but to support. Yeah, you can um, ask out your contract and all that. You could try to, like, get out of it. But if you know Death Row Records and if you know who Suge Knight is, you know just leaving, it ain't going to be good, okay? It, it, it's not going to be good um, at all. So this mom like, if you, there's... Uh, so when, uh, cause no, when Dr. Dre, when he left, uh, Death Row Records, he couldn't take any of his music or money with him. So he pretty much had to start, um, fresh with his, uh, record label, um, Aftermath. When Snoop Dogg, when he left, um, Death Row Records, uh, he went over to this, um, artist or, um, like, well, yeah, artist and stuff, but he went to his record label, uh, Master P. And Master P, he had to pay Suge Knight, um, $8 million dollars to get a uh, Snoop Dogg and it's like fam why am I having to but no like the the crash like the crash and fall of Death Row Records it's such an interesting story because it was like man it was and so it because no like I guess like to kind of talk on it like briefly and things after Tupac because Tupac was signed to Death Row Records but he obviously you know we all know that he passed away and then uh but the same uh day uh when um well not the same day uh tupac passed away or whatever uh but no it was uh, like um the, well, the same day when tupac had got shot he had uh got into a fight prior beforehand but suge knight also got him some hits in but i guess suge knight was on parole so when the video got leaked out or was put out that uh um suge knight was fighting he got arrested he couldn't control the company so all of these guys like the cars the houses the money all that stuff all taken away death row records just failed so yeah, it was Death Row Records, I'm telling you guys, it is such an interesting story, but that is literally the best story, like, I, I wish I could go, like, more deeper in details with Death Row Records and all that stuff, but it is literally the perfect example of talking about controlling so I'm like, that's why I'm like, you know, people, you gotta, you obviously, it's like, you know, you gotta have, like, control, don't let nobody have control over you, you gotta have control over yourself, you always gotta, like, have, because, no, there's gonna be people out there where they feel lost, they feel like, oh, well, I, I need somebody to control me because I'm not gonna know what to do, sit down and take the time to figure out what to do, because I'm like, I'm saying, my thing is this, I remember prior before, uh, when I had got into YouTube, everybody was around me was controlling my future i had people telling me oh you should go to school or i had people telling you, you need to enlist in the military oh you gotta go get a job you gotta do this you gotta do that and then when i sat down and started thinking about like well what do i want to do that's i had to say that was the first step the first step of me gain, like regaining control over myself was throwing all of those ideas away creating my uh gaming channel t moss boss gaming and becoming a content creator that's when I had, um, that's when I had to say I had, um, regained control over myself. And, oh my god, like, I had fought hard to, like, you know, I guess, and the thing is, is, like, I'm still fighting to this day just to gain, um, respect from those that, like, you know, you want to, they want to have, like, some sort of control over my life and what I do, but it's like, fam, this is my life. This is what I want to do. Why can I not? And it's like, the thing is this, I'm good at it. You know, yeah, there might be people in, people in this world that want to say, oh, yeah, T-Moss Boss, he ain't good at content creating. He ain't, you know, he ain't this, he ain't that. But the funny thing is, it's like, look at how far I've came, you know, just based off of the crap content that I have been posting. I'm saying I'm like making the same amount of money that I was making at my old job. It's like, you can't tell me that I'm not being, that I'm not a successful content creator. I may not be a successful content creator in their eyes, but in my eyes, I feel like I'm a pretty darn good content creator. So it just, it really, it trips me out though. Like when people, they're so quick to just want to have that control over you. But it's like, fam, do you got, people need to understand this. People need to understand this. This, this life that you're living right now. It is your life. It's not their life. It's not nobody else's life. 
your life. So when people want to start having control over you, you got to remind them. You got you have to remind them, even if it's people that had literally gave you life, you have to remind them and let them know, hey, like this is what I'm doing. OK, now, if you don't support it, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I wish things could be different. But at the same time, I want to do things for me. I, I want to do because, no, like when I sit down, I think about I'm like, yeah, even though at my last job. You know, I worked around great people. I made good, you know, I, I made, yeah, some, like, you know, good money and stuff. It helped me out uh, a lot, you know, overall with the stuff that I was doing. But at the same time, it wasn't what I wanted to do. It, it was nothing nowhere near is what I want. And that was the one thing that I feared was, like, I don't want to be, like, 60 years old retiring from this place. I want to be, I don't want to look up and be all, like, I literally pushed my dreams away to work for this place. When I'm like, and I'm seeing all these different people around me from YouTubers, TikTokers, Twitch streamers, you know, just overall like, yeah, content creators, social media influencers, I'm seeing all these people that was literally doing the same thing I was doing. They made a living off of it. And then I made a living off of working at a cafe. That, no, that is not going to be my life. I, my thing is this, you know, because my birthday is coming up here in the, um, you know, in the, uh, some days and stuff. But here's the thing, you know. I was, yeah, like, I was born, you know, August 10th, 1996. There was a reason for that. There was a legitimate reason on why in the early hours of August 10th, 1996, when there was probably all these things that was being talked about, there was being all these different things being, you know, mentioned and bit, but there was the one thing and the biggest thing that happened, you know, in my life, it was me being born okay now when i look at my life and i look at all the different things that i got into and all the different things that's made me happy you know like my thing when i sit down think about i'm like why did i how did i why why did video games stick out so much in my life why did watching youtube videos stick out so much in my life why why being an entertainer sticked out so much in my life you know, why was I doing these like career test things when I was in school and they were telling me literally your job, your dream job or the job that you should be doing. It has to be something that do that. It, it has something to do with arts. What is content creating? It's a form of art. That's how I see it. So I'm like, you don't like go through all of that. You don't go through almost 26 years of life. You look at all of these different things that you came across and you ignore it so you can work at a cafe or or do some just overall some job that's going to leave me depressed. Because my thing is this with content creating when I when my thing is this when I start up a podcast episode, when I start up a TikTok um, video or a YouTube video, a Twitch stream, whatever, I'm not depressed. I may be depressed about other things, but there has never been a time where content creating had me depressed. I never woke up and was all like, oh my God, I don't want to do this today. The only reason why I think I would ever say anything like that is because I'm probably tired. It's because I'm sick. Like even the thing is, is this, even when I'm tired and sick, I still go out and do some content creating related. I had COVID, bro. I had COVID. And still started up a stream. I still started up podcast episodes. So people cannot tell me, because I'm telling you right now, people cannot tell me that content creating is not my job. That this is not my dream job. I refuse to listen to anybody that's going to tell me some stuff like that. Because it's not going to go through. I'm going I'm to tell you that right now. It, it's, it's, it's not going to go through. you like, you know, all these different facts and different things that I remember throughout my years of content creating and I'm supposed to just forget all of that why haven't my thing the funny thing is it's like why haven't I forgotten any of that stuff why because I'm like if content creating wasn't supposed to be my dream job then it's all like why do I remember why do I remember to wake up to stream why do I remember to wake up and record videos why do I remember to you know get into all these debt check all my different uh like platforms and all this other different stuff because I'm saying if it wasn't meant for me to be a content creator I wouldn't be remembering all these different things and all these you know all these different steps it takes to be a content creator 
So, anyways, just letting y'all know, it's all like when it comes to having control over yourself, you need to have that control. Nobody else. If they are controlling you to benefit your life, that's one thing. But if it's gonna, you know, if they're overall doing it to over benefit themselves, that ain't gonna work. That's that's not living life. I'm sorry. All right, but. Anyways, and that being said, I will talk to y'all later. Thank you guys for watching and or listening. If you're viewing this on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're viewing this on the podcast streaming service, make sure you follow or subscribe. I set up. Make sure you subscribe to one of my 43 YouTube channels. Follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, and Instagram at TMOSBoss. And make sure you follow my Facebook page at TMOSBoss Fan Page. Um, and also, if you're purchasing any tickets from SeatGeek, make sure you use my promo code TMOSBOSS. And when I'm $20 off your first purchase, thank you guys for watching and or listening, and peace.